evening everyone. I'm Ivy from Divisions of Program Promotion. Welcome to Utah Life Webinar. Glad to see you all here. Well, tonight's topic is Bioscience, the opportunity behind the crisis. Tonight, our speaker is Mr. Yuan. He is from Faculty of Science, Department of Allied Health Sciences, Ampang Campus. Tonight, we we'll we'll webinars will be take about one hour. After the talk, topic sharing, there is a Q&A question. If you have any questions, please click the Q&A button below the screen. In order to make sure the webinar runs smooth, I would like to have your attention. Please do not pay your question at the chat box. If you wish to raise up your question, please click the Q&A button. Due to the limited time, we may not be able to answer all the questions. Only the selected questions will be answered. Zoom is our main platform. At the same time, we will like on our official Facebook page, which is Utah for you. If any of your friends are not yet registered in Zoom, do join us at Facebook page Utah for you. All right, now let's welcome our speaker, Mr. Yuan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I hope you can hear me. Okay, now uh, it's good to be, uh, it's glad to be here that I share some of my point of view with you. Okay. Uh, I do see that some of the audience appear to be my ex-students. Uh, I hope you are doing well right now in your career. Okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now, uh, thanks for joining this webinar, okay, in which I will share with you some of my personal points of view, okay, on the trends of, of career prospect and opportunities amid the current COVID-19 pandemic. Now, before this, I have actually like I received many questions from both from parents during the education fair or from students uh, during the academic advisory sessions. Okay, so questioning about their future if they are studying the bioscience. Okay, now tonight, if the, if the parents are here, hopefully, and if, all the, if those students who previously told me these questions, if you are here again, so I do welcome you here to join me in these sessions. So I hope that I can like call, share with you tonight with my single two cents, uh, my personal point of view on the career prospect that due to the, uh, due to this COVID-19, right? Now, since this uh, emergence in the year of 2019, now COVID-19 has become a medical emergency as one of the most serious pandemic ever uh, since the 1918 Spanish flu, yes. Okay, now almost every country in the world is hit by this pandemic, except for this, there are two there, and one of them I believe to be North Korean, that is uh, re always remain mysterious. Okay, now with the total cases of what I call more than 18 millions, okay, and a high number of deaths as well, okay, anytime you could reach to 1 million very, very soon, okay, now. <clears throat> Uh, and the figure is what I call rising continuously despite more than six months. Now this is uh, what I call somehow is quite unusual already. Okay, we can call it as a global pandemic because previously the most serious uh, uh, global pandemic was this SARS and that one also does not last that long. Okay, so what I call as we can see from a report from conventional and social media, Okay, this tiny creature has seriously impacted various aspects. Okay, now many people across the world were down with illness of different severity, and many lives were lost. Okay, due to resp respiratory stress, or distress syndrome, and organ failure. Now, in view of the seriousness of this pandemic, as well as the rapid dissemination of of this virus. The government, the government from different countries were forced to take serious precaution steps to contain this virus, including lockdown or open control, which is experienced by us right now. Okay. Now, apart from its serious impact on the health and medical sector, COVID-19 has also heavily strengthened the global economy. The lockdown or restrictions movement control implemented in many countries has almost brought all trade and other economy activities to a standstill. 
Consequently, majority, uh, many countries are on the brink of recession, okay, in which we can see right now, including Malaysia, which is expected to suffer from economic contractions ranging from zero, uh, negative five to zero percent in terms of GDP, what we call the gross domestic product. So what does that mean by these figures? Okay, now, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, okay. This means when there is no production or business, there is no income for the companies or employers. Consequently, the employers might be subjected to salary cut or even retrenchment. According to the International Labor Organizations or ILO, it is estimated that 38% of the global workforce are at high risk of pay cut or even retrenched. And these sectors are the most affected, which range from accommodations, food services, manufacturing, okay, and all the way to tourism, okay, which we can see in our own nation as well. Okay. Now, in fact, what we worry is, what, what we worry actually is ha happening right is ha actually happening right now, okay, as reports on the retrenchment are heard almost every day affecting the rise bowl of people working in various companies, including those giant companies like Air Asia or those things. Okay. Now, according to the Department of Statistic Malaysia, since the outbreak of this pandemic, the unemployment rate in Malaysia has been rising. Now, the latest figure, uh, uh, the latest figure as reported in May, okay, uh, it was about uh, 3.3%, sorry, in February, it was 3.3% of unemployment, but it like, rose to like 5% in April in such a short period, which is very unusual, okay? And the latest figure, according to the statistic in May, is already up to 5.3%, which corresponds to about 826,000 unemployment. So what we worry is, that this figure could be further exacerbated by the annual huge number of graduating students readily deployed to the job market. Now, the major concern is, will they find or even secure a job? Okay, this is our main concern. I believe that uh, many of you who are graduating, you also worry about this problem as well, right? Okay, now, while the COVID-19 had like, uh, brought pessimism and gloomy atmosphere to many careers, it does create opportunities to others. Now, for example, the IT, the IT industry, okay, as the demand for IT devices or for working or studying from home is increasing, now people are forced to change their nature of work and studying using online platform, okay? Now, the second one, okay, which is bioscience career, okay, has become highly demanded during this pandemic. Now, I came across uh, several reviews that suggesting that this bioscience okay, may be potentially I call, emerge as one of the highly demanded careers among the adults. Of course, it's after IT department. So let me share with you okay, why we say so. Okay, let's pick up the first one, the clinical diagnostic. Okay, so what is clinical diagnostic? Actually, it's, labor, it's a kind of uh, like a laboratory testing on human biological samples that to tell you what kind of uh, disease or infections that you have. So we can give a kind of uh, information to the doctors to take, to take quick response whether you need to be treated or not, okay? Now, diagnostic testing services are somehow experiencing and what I call uh, unpre unprecedented huge demand across the world amid the outbreak of COVID-19, okay? Now, these testing are somehow very important for appropriate response to the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, okay, whether the testing will tell you whether you need to be quarantined or not, or whether you need to be treated or not, okay? Now, currently, there are not enough COVID-19 tests and laboratories to meet the demand. So, Creating new tests and increasing the capacity of rapid tests are urgently needed. And diagnostic laboratories which are involved in this screening 
will be will see an increased need for services in the months ahead. Okay, so the Ministry of Health in Malaysia has somehow come up with quick response to somehow maximize its diagnostic capacity in several big scale government hospitals, public health laboratories, and IMR. Okay, now subsequently, private laboratories such as Labling's, Grebos, and Pantai Premier are also joining the team to ease the burden by MOH. Now, furthermore, the screen capacity was further increased with the help of several higher learning institutions in response to the call by MOH. Therefore, diagnostic, uh, what I call diagnostic service is what I call somehow definitely one of the, what I call the key sectors that are seeing growth opportunities during the coronavirus pandemic. Okay. Okay. So what about the next one? Okay. Biomedical engineering. Okay. That would be the next career that sees an increase of demand. Okay. How, why, why I say so? But before that, what is biomedical engineering? Of course, this is not what I call directly only related to biomedical science, all these things that also involve the engineering as well. Perhaps you might think it's not relevant to some uh, to, to, to you, but in fact, it is not. Okay, so first of all, biomedical engineering somehow is our car is a field of uh, in this applied field of science and uh, what I call engineering. Okay, at the intersections of engineering, biology, healthcare, and medicine. Okay, they, com they combine several fields. Okay, now the aim of this is to develop like, systems, equipments, instruments, and devices in order to solve clinical problems, both diagnostic and therapeutics. Okay, so for example, as I have mentioned earlier about the medical diagnostic laboratories, the efforts by the authority, of authority to increase the capacity in COVID-19 screening and detections will increase the demand for diagnostic equipment or devices. For example, PCR detections, okay, the PCR detection system, okay. The productions, installations, demonstrations, quality assurance and maintenance of these instruments or devices require a group of people with specializations in biomedical engineering, okay. Now, with the spread of coronavirus, the demand for masks, ventilators, disposable gloves, goggles, face shields, and other medical pieces of equipment have gone up. Uh, similarly, we need bioengineering that worked together with the biomedical scientists and other bio-related careers to develop and produce, as well as quality assessment of this personal protection equipment, what we call a PPE, before they are brought into the market. Okay, right, so this is the second one that although that many of you might think is uh, unrelated, but we can, uh, the students under bioscience can somehow contribute to contributions in this biomedical engineering. Okay, now the third one is biomedical, the third field of bioscience career is biomedical science. Oh, sorry, biomedical research. Okay, now this is somehow contributes significantly in the bat in the battle against this pandemic. Okay, well, <clears throat> ever since the emergence of, for this new virus, now multiple researchers have been carried out worldwide, as indicated by numerous publications in many journals. Okay, behind this scene of the publications are those hard-working virologists, immunologists, biomedical and clinical scientists who are competing with time to study the nature and the structures of the virus, how the virus causes infections and disease in human, as well as how the human immune system responds to the infection. Now, the data generated from this research are somehow essential for the design and the development of new vaccines and other therapeutics against this virus, as well as the knowledge in protecting humans from the viral infections. If without this research, 
we will never know that this virus can be spread through what called inhal inhalations of the air droplets or those things. So that's why they somehow play a very important contribution to tell us about the danger of this virus. Okay, now as shown in this graph, since the emergence of this virus, the number of research and publications have been rising tre tremendously due to the urgent need to understand this virus and to find cure to the infections. Now, as you can see from here, okay, okay, up to 30th May 2020, the number of publications is about 36,883. Now, right yesterday, okay, when I searched from this PubMed data, okay, the figure was some, has somehow increased to 37,573 in such a short period of time. Okay, so this is recorded in what I call the PubMed, which is a kind of a da database that commonly used for my, uh, mine, my, what I call info mining in research. Okay, now what does that mean? This clearly shows that many laboratories throughout the world are actually focusing on the research of this virus. And one of the factors that lead to this active publication is the mutual collaborations between different labs from different countries as well. Okay, so this is a very what call promising development, okay, that a kind of the pandemic somehow united the researchers from different places or different countries. Okay, now, <clears throat> okay. now as described by this auto, okay, COVID-19 is, re COVID is reshaping the world of bioscience publishing. As this is a global medical emergency, many research groups are willing to share their findings and data with other groups or work collaboratively with the aims of providing solutions to control this infection. Therefore, it is expected that more biomedical scientists or other bio-related scientists are needed to cope with the need for more coming fundamental and apply research on this virus. Okay, this optimistic prediction somehow is based on the support from the local government as well as the biotech companies who actually pump in huge money to support the biomedical research with the aims of producing effective vaccines as soon as possible. So as you can see from this graph, from this figure, now the progress of what well, sorry, the progress of vaccine and therapeutic development for COVID-19 is so fast. Okay. Now many pharmaceutical for biotech companies are actually racing with each other to come up with an effective cure for these infections. Now, previously, okay, <clears throat> what we call uh, I'm sure that in these uh, few weeks or even few days, uh, these few days, you heard that sometimes uh, certain countries that suddenly announced that they are about to come up with a new vaccine. Okay, so yesterday, um, two days ago, perhaps it was from U United States. And yesterday, if I know mistaken, yesterday, Russia announced that. Okay, so you see, every, every what I call, those what I call countries with the power in, uh, in research, they are actually okay, racing with each other to come up with the vaccine. Now, this is understandable because this vaccine somehow is seriously needed. Without this vaccine, we do not know when the third or the fourth wave strikes back, okay? We do not know how serious that it could impact our global economy. And we do not know how long we can sustain. That's why everyone now is racing for the vaccine development, okay? Now, students, these are the biotech or the pharmaceutical companies that are somehow under, uh, in the progress of producing new vaccines or therapeutic agents against the viral infections. Okay, now some of them you have seen before. Okay, perhaps or maybe some of them you have you have not seen. But when you Google them, you might be shocked. Okay, of their wealth and their involvement in the COVID nineteen research. Okay, not only this. Okay, you have this as well. Okay, now so I'm not sure any one of you who are now uh, as a like attendees or the audience. I'm not sure any one of you working in these companies or not. But if you find the opportunity to work in one of these companies, like for example here, I think 
you appreciate that because these are the giant pharmaceutical companies that actually can what call, uh, can uh, pump in a lot of money and they have a high employment in various sectors from the research, from productions, from clinical trials and delivery, whatever okay, you can think about. Okay, right? So if you have the chance to work in this company, appreciate that. Okay, so what happened if these companies have successfully come up with their products or their, for example, those vaccines? But bear in mind, these vaccines that are newly came out cannot be directly used on human. They need to go through stages of testing. And here comes the next field, which we call clinical trials, okay? Which is the next bioscience related career that may seem to be demanded, okay? Now, in fact, this is the downstream sector that work hand in hand together with those pharmaceutical companies, okay? Okay, now, as I mentioned to you, the newly introduced vaccines cannot be directly used without testing. Before the vaccine and other therapeutics are officially approved for clinical applications, they will go through multiple phases of clinical trial to ensure these products are safe and effective in human. In order to carry out this, there are companies which will recruit these what we call clinical associates who work together with clinicians or doctors to test these vaccines or therapeutics on volunteers or patients with consent. The findings and data from these clinical trials will be collected and analyzed by these clinical associates for the use of those pharmaceutical or biotech companies. Okay, so as you can see from this graph, many clinical trials on COVID-19 have been conducted to test the effectiveness and safety features of the newly introduced vaccines and the therapeutic agents against the virus. Okay, now as there are many incoming vaccines which are still under laboratory and animal studies. It is somehow believed that more clinical trials will be conducted. And in this case, more clinical associates will be needed as well. Okay, so what, ha what happened after all these clinical trials have, uh, what call, have come with success? So when, the, when these what call, drugs or vaccines are ready to be introduced into the market, so who were in charge of this? So now we come to medical sales and marketing as well as a product specialist, okay? So when these vaccines and therapies are approved for clinical use, okay, now as well as the instruments and devices used for COVID-19 detections are developed by those what I call biomedical engineers. Now we need further more downstream support chain to promote, to market, and to distribute these products to the end users, who are the doctors, researchers, and diagnostic laboratories. Okay, so here we can see uh, the next field that the, 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 there are some careers that are closely related to this. Of course, I believe that some of you here, you are kind of medical sales, okay, and perhaps uh, you have your product specialist as well. Okay, when I talk about the product specialist and also the application specialist, these are the people that are involved, involved in demonstrating new device and also provide training to end users. Okay, why we need them? Because these are the people who is going to train the users on how to use and how to test these machines, okay? And also provide training to the end users, okay? So, so this service somehow required basic and professional knowledge in biomedical and clinical science, okay? That this would be an advantage to students with this knowledge, definitely, okay, right? So what are, what are the fields that are related? Okay, if perhaps I, when I show you this slide, you might be shocked, okay? You might be surprised when you see these slides. Health insurance, okay? Now, I, I do not know any of you here are working in an insurance company. Okay, I, I do not know how's the insurance company right now. Okay, but according to what call uh, to uh, uh, what call some what call uh, economy experts. Okay, they say although the insurance sectors are seriously hit 
during this COVID-19 pandemic. But this what I call economy of financial experts predict that there, there would be a surge in insurance demand after the pandemic. Sorry. Okay. Okay. In view of the increased awareness in health and financial security. Okay, because after this, many are uh, okay, they, they might learn something about the importance of the insurance because it's not cheap. My car to do a single test for this COVID-19 may come at a few hundreds. And what about for those who lost their jobs? Okay, after this uh, during this COVID-19. So both they, they lost the white card, the jobs and lost the money, all those things. So that's why they, they, they are losing this white card, health and financial security. Okay, that's why here comes the insurance that can provide with that with uh, uh we can provide them with this kind of sense of security. Okay, now this what I call awareness in the health and the what I call financial planning somehow are uh, getting what I call stronger. Okay, for, uh, for among the what I call the young educated people. Okay, the what I call the newly graduates nowadays. I do not know, but what I was being told last time. The first step in your financial planning is to secure you with, a, with an insurance. This is what I was told. And now I totally agree with, uh, with uh, that fellow uh, who is now my, my agent for my insurance. Okay, that's why I bought two insurance from him. Okay, I totally agree with, uh, with him because we never know. Okay, the money that you have been saving months or years, it, can, it could just gone in days okay, when it comes to a, some kind of a serious disease or illness. Okay, so it is important to secure yourself with a kind of a medical or a health insurance. So I believe that with this, like of, during, after the post-pandemic, okay, means when this uh, pandemic is somehow a bit resolved, okay, so there might be a kind of a increased awareness okay, on, on, the, on the importance of the insurance. Okay? Now, in fact, many biomedical graduates are actually employed by the insurance companies as insurance agents medical claims, and underwriters. As these careers require some kind of a biomedical and health knowledge in client consultations and medical report analysis. So that's why I, that's why, uh, what I was being told that many of my former students are right now working in an insurance company. So it is not a surprise. Okay? So now an answer to some of the students who are yet to graduate, why biomedical students end up working in an insurance company. So today, I hope I can give you some clue. Okay, so that's all about the what called the few careers that are uh, that are called is they are expected okay, to come up with a high demand during or after this COVID. Bear in mind, we are we are not only hit by COVID nineteen. Okay, there are many emerging new virus, uh, emerging new infectious diseases. Not only infectious diseases, they are also are the what we call the non-communicable diseases, like cancers, diabetics, or things that require okay, the what we call the help from the bio-related careers. Okay, so it is what we call a not pessimistic. What we call if you graduated as this is is not kind of the pessimism if you graduated as a bio student. Bio students that as many students will complain to me, they can't they can't find a job or these things. No, the problem, the question is. You're not, you're kind of not difficult to find a job. It's just that you're choosing a job. Okay, right? So these are all the what I call careers that I'd like to share with you to, uh, tonight. Okay, and of course, coming back a little bit commercial, okay, in, bio, in Utah, we have this bio-related sciences program that offered to the students. I believe that some of you graduated with this subject uh, programs, and some of you are studying that. And perhaps that some of you are planning for your future our uh, core educations. So we have biomedical science in Utah. You have microbiology. Okay, we have biotechnology, and we have biochemistry. So all these subjects are somehow what I call closely related to this what I call uh, the uh, to, that can contribute okay to solve issues of this COVID nineteen. I hope that those who are already like, uh, com uh, completing your studies, when you're about to choose your career, okay, you can, you can choose whether it's a bi-related or non-bi-related. But what to me is more, more, more important is at least it can contribute to mankind.
Okay, so the take home message. Okay, now COVID nineteen have bring us what call the negative impact and positive impact as well. So how do we respond to it? You want to respond positively or negatively? It's your options. Okay, some people, okay, or many people will see this as a crisis, but some people will take this as opportunities. So which one will you choose? It's up to you. Okay, right? So that's all about my sharing. I, I, I purposely shorten my sharing so that I can allow more questions from the audience, right? So it's about my sharing tonight. Thank you very much, students. Uh, sorry, thank you very much, audience. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Yuan. Ms. Wong, is there any questions from the floor? Uh, audience, uh, we are now having a Q&A question, a section. If let's say you wish to raise up your question, uh, please press on the uh, Q&A button. Mr. Yuan, uh, yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, yeah, audience, uh, can I have your response? Uh, may I know how many of you uh, are currently SPM students or SPM leaver? You may uh, click your, uh, put your, uh, put one at the chat box. If let's say you are a current student, you can put that in the chat box. Let me know whether you are a current SPM student or SPM leaver. Okay, Mr. Yan, I have a question from uh, Teresa Yap. Yeah, I saw that as well. Uh, yeah. Okay, I, I read the questions, okay, from Teresa Yap. Yeah, okay, uh, I'd like to raise questions. Uh, most of the industry required experienced people rather than fresh grads. Uh, yes, to us, yes, I agree with you to a certain extent. Now, when, when these, these careers usually, okay, uh, somehow belongs to what I call the higher top level, okay, that required professional skills and professional knowledge. That what we think this are what we call the under, undergraduate degree are not sufficient to fulfill the criteria. So that's why they need more experience. Of course, experience can be accumulated or acquired from the beginning. If you join as a freshie, in let's say, let's say, let's say you, you fail to apply for this company which required experienced people, doesn't matter, it's not the end of the world. Okay, you can try with other related companies first who welcome fresh grads. In fact, there are many companies right now, they are welcoming fresh grads. So you work in, you try to join in this company first. Okay, the most important is gain the experience first. Okay, try your very best to, like, uh, to gain as much, as, uh, as much experience as possible so can you, you can learn something. So when you, when you think that you come to a certain level that you think that you, are, you can fulfill the criteria from that company, just in case in the future, that particular company that required experience stuff, okay, uh, opening for recruitment, so perhaps you can try a lot. Okay, I understand it is not fair to many, like our uh, fresh grads, that uh, these companies require the experienced people. The question is, where are these experienced people from? They also started from fresh grad as well. They also started from freshie without experience. So if you don't mind, I, I would like to suggest you or encourage you to try in other related company first with more experience. Okay, then you, perhaps you try a lot in the future to search for other bigger companies that you think that are taking what I call the experience stuff, right? Have I answered your questions, uh, Kester? Okay, so the next one, uh, Ken Yap. Since the Allied Health Professionals uh, call Act has been gazetted, yes. What does this mean for the current and future job candidates in the life science sectors? That means, okay, now uh, I'm sure that you have followed up the news that uh, what I call the Allied Health Science uh, Act has been gazetted recently. Okay, that means in the future, those what I call graduates or those what I call, uh, what I call those people who are working, okay, related directly to the clinical science. Okay, means dealing with patients, 
okay, or dealing with or what I call clinical science or medical science. Okay, they can be from uh, from like a range from this like a medical laboratory technologies. They can be dietitians. Okay, they can be what I call uh, radiographies. Okay, what else can be what I call even lecturers who are teaching biomedical science or medical science. Okay, now these people need to register, need to register, and under this regulatory re regulatory body, what we call the Allied Health Science Council. Okay, so under this council, there are certain regulations that these people that these people need to follow. Okay, so this is the what I call uh, this is the 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 the, the, the current situ situations that is going to be implemented very soon. Sooner or later, I think they are going to what I call to show those what I call uh, they are going to open the registrations. Okay, that are those companies that are taking that are involved in this. Uh, what I call health science related careers that need to register their stuff, okay, to be under this. And I'm not sure, but maybe if you read through the, the what I call the regulations, upon certain years that these people need to re register again, okay. Now, I believe that many of you might be what I call uh, concerned about is there any adjustment in the salary scale? For this, what I call uh, this under this, what I call a Light Health Science Act. Now, this one is uh, 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 not convenient to comment here, but uh, what I like, to, I believe that this is actually subjected to the companies for these policies. Okay, so I, I would like to say that peop, uh, people who are working under this a Light Health Science Act and register this a Light Health Science Act, they are considered what we call a kind of a professional jobs already. Okay, and yeah, have I answered your questions? Okay, right, all right. Now next, Jian uh, Zhong. Okay, often heard people say there are no job after graduating from science related course in Malaysia. Is it true? Now, as I mentioned just now uh, during the sharing, okay, it is not say, I call, uh, no jobs. It is actually, uh, uh, pick, picking is, it is about the matter of choosing or picking jobs, okay? Right, so uh, many uh, many graduates will have this kind of mindset that right after graduating from the studies, especially from those what I call they they consider as a professional degree or those things, they they might assume that waiting for them automatically will be offered a high pay job, okay, a, a kind of a, a professional job with high pay. But again, what I would like to highlight here. Okay, and what I call a high paid job will not automatically come to us. Okay, it is based on how much we work. As a freshie, okay, when we graduated from the university, okay, we what I call uh, we you, you can ask yourself how much do you work without experience. Okay, so as I mentioned just now, experience actually are accumulated okay, from time to time. Okay, when you have gone through uh, different kind of uh, assignments, projects, okay, uh, what I call the, the jobs given by your uh, superior or things. So from there, you gain the experience. And from this experience, we learn something. And perhaps our value every day will increase and increase. Okay, right? So in that case, what I call you, then you, you using this experience, then you can, maybe you can, what I call negotiate, okay, for a new job. Of with a high pay as well. Okay, uh, I would like to tell uh, the students here a degree nowadays, okay, even though a student with a high CGPA performance doesn't mean will be automatically offered with a good job. A degree actually is just an entry ticket to a career. But what will determine whether in the future whether you'll be promoted or whether you will have your uh, good career development or not is always based on the work attitude. Okay, Jian Zhong, hope I have answered your questions. Okay, right, Xing, Xing Yan. Okay, I would like to ask, are these bioscience career opportunities over, available for graduates who did not major any bioscience course? Now, uh, I I like to, if if possible, I like you to clarify. It, okay, means what 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 are the 
cost that you're talking about that did, uh, did not major any bio, bioscience cost. For example, okay, but if let's say microbiology, that is not those courses that I share with you, okay, those courses they are directly related to the bioscience course, okay, and, and some of them are directly related in the medical health, okay, and these jobs, okay, uh, we can see. A kind of uh, what I call a uh, uh, potential. We can see the potential that these jobs can, can somehow contribute, okay, uh, to this what I call to these companies, okay, that is uh, are demanding people with specialized skills and knowledge, okay, in the bio, uh, bio related research, okay, or bio de uh, related development, okay, services, diagnostic orders, okay, so. Uh, I'm not sure that what are you trying to ask that uh, are you asking that if uh, a graduates who are what call taking uh, what call advertising or taking a business related program joining a bioscience course uh, I would say I call maybe you may not able to directly relate to this career but there's a, there's always a joke okay that People who are working, uh, who are studying non-bio-related subjects, sometimes can dominate those people who are working in science. Let's say, for example, human resource management, right? So perhaps you can you can choose to work in a company, in a biotech company, as in the management level or in the human resource, right? Okay. I hope I have answered your questions. Okay. And yeah, again, do you think? Do you think there will be an increase in the number of job opportunities for lab technicians, lab researchers since the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, uh, optimistically, okay, I would say it, yes, okay, because now we have we are what I call as I heard from what my friends because for your information actually, uh, I I graduated in 2000, okay, so at this moment at this moment there are, are some of my friends. Who are actually owning companies, okay, biotech companies, diagnostic companies, all these things. And some of our friends are working in the what I call medical sales company that at the manage, ma managing level, okay. So, uh, what I heard from them, okay, they have difficulties of looking for what I call new stuff, okay. Uh, in fact, uh, I, uh, I mean over the two months, I have two cases that uh, my friends actually are uh, what I call asking. Me to how I call hate hunt those potential students in in your town, okay. Now, uh, despite uh, numerous times I tried, and still I failed to get him any good candidate, okay. Uh, the, of course, this independent case doesn't mean that there's a lot of jobs offered there out offer out there, okay. But again, you're talking about if you're talking about lab technicians, okay, lab technician, okay. The, the, the thing is, the funny thing for lab technician is, usually, tech lab technician, okay, there is a white call very uh, less open vacancies. If you go and check the white call, if you go and check the newspapers or these things, they have very limited open vacancies. They only have these open vacancies where there's a new hospitals coming out of things, right? Okay, for those hospital-based laboratories. But for private lab laboratories like BP, Gribbles, all these things, yes, from time to time, They'll ask for new stuff. But for the hospital based laboratories, why they have limited vacancies? Because the laboratory that usually prefer to hate hunt through what I call connections. That means they, have, they, they, they rather like to con contact someone internally or they know someone from what there's no, some, they, they've tried to ask someone they know to find a candidate, like what my, like what my former hospitals, okay. Uh, like my former hospitals, a laboratory in, uh, in, in this one of the private hospitals in Penang. Okay, whenever they need a new staff, the manager will contact me. So to try to uh, hate hunt any good candidate students. Okay, but for this COVID nineteen pandemic, I believe with the what called introducing of with the introductions of new instruments, new testing kits, new rapid tests, all those things. Okay, perhaps. The, the companies or the laboratories might recruit more people, okay? In fact, what we know right now that during this COVID-19, 
most of the laboratories that I show, that I shared with you just now in the in the in the slide, okay, the, those are what I call the government hospitals based laboratories, the private labs, all these things. Most of the laboratories are actually 24 hours operating because the number of these samples are so huge, okay, and you need people to take turn or take shift to carry out this, right? So Ken Yap, there's a potential there, but if you are uh, the, since the COVID-19 pandemic, I can see the poten potential, right? Okay. Uh, case C. Okay, last question for you tonight. Uh, uh, Mr. Okay. Head, I have a question for you. Uh, uh, Ms. Wong, I, I finished this two first, okay? This two, uh, Kenya, uh, oh, yeah, sure. in, in, in continuing with your questions as well, Kenya, following my, uh, your, your pre previous questions, does it mean this is just temporary? Uh, actually, it is not. Okay, now many people will, will, will uh, mean, many people are worried that after this COVID-19, is there any opportunity or not? But students, bear, or I'm not sure your students are not, okay, but bear in mind, Malaysia is not only struck by COVID-19, okay? In fact, Malaysia, okay, somehow is endemic with many infectious diseases. Like for example, of course, you know dengue, the dengue infection. In fact, the number of the dengue fatal cases is much more than the COVID-19. And dengue is all the years, okay? It's not only recently, it's all the years, okay? Of course, not apart from dengue, we have different kinds of infectious diseases like the chikunia, okay? We have uh, uh, like leptospirosis that, that strikes from time to time, all those things. And not only, not only this infectious disease, like I mentioned just now, there are other also non-communicable disease, okay? That require this health care service all the time. And for your information, there's, there's this what we call development of what we call health tourism. I'm not sure, Kenya, whether you know about this health tourism or not. Malaysia plans to become an, a potential health tourism, uh, a, a country with a good service of health tourism. And in fact, certain places in Malaysia, they are potentially can be um, a health tourism spot, like for example, in Penang. Okay, in Penang, we receive uh, numerous patients from Indonesia. Those wealthy Indonesians, they always come to Penang for, uh, for touring and also for health screening. This is what we call a health tourism, okay? So this could be a kind of the, another factors that will continue to promote this bio-related career, continue to go on, okay? Can you, I hope that answers your questions. Okay, let's come to the last one, Sinti. If I wish to be a lecturer for bioscience, is it better to, for me to work in laboratory to gain experience before applying to job at, at universities. Okay, when I, when I look at your questions that I think about me, okay, uh, no, it's up to, up to you because, uh, yes, of course, it's an advantage if you what call, have some ex working experience or the industry experience before joining the education so that you can share whatever you gained in your career to the students. Okay, and you can apply whatever you have uh, gained, the experience you can apply in your research as well. Okay, right, of course, there are, they, they are, they are also this, what I call people that directly after uh, like a degree, then join the masters and the PhDs, then directly become lecturers also without working experience also can, but of course, it'll be faster, it'll be faster. Okay, but if you wish to gain what I call working experience before joining as a lecturer, you must be ready to pay the cost of your time, okay? Because working in one or two years may not gain you sufficient experience. So maybe you need to work maybe <laughs> at least a few years, and also maybe you can uh, maybe jump to another job before joining back the education. But of course, you want to become a lecturer, so you need to go for the postgrad studies, right? Cindy, I hope I answer your questions, okay? Okay, Ms. Wong, uh, okay. No, no more questions, right? No more. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yuan, for sharing. Before we end, please allow me to introduce you a list of programs offered by Faculty of Science. Most of the program related to biology and chemistry we offer in Kampa campus. Besides that, Faculty of Science do offer two programs related to mathematics. They are Bachelors of Science Logistics and International Shipping and Bachelors of Science Statistical Compu 
testing and operations research. For more information, you can uh, log into Utah web page. Before we end, we would like to announce you uh, Utah upcoming activity. Uh, yes, Utah uh, from to 30th August, Utah is organized Cyber Open Day from 9 to 5. If you have any inquiry regarding programs or enrollment, you live chat with us. Besides that, we do arrange webinars per section during uh, each of the day. If you're interested to join the webinar, do register yourself at below link. You can register to this link for the webinar. Last but not least, tonight's webinar will be recorded at our official Facebook page, Utah for You. For further inquiry, you may contact us through WeChat. WhatsApp and Facebook. Thank you for joining us tonight and have a nice day. Thank you.